Why tack once or only twice? It's not just success on the roll of a dice. It's all about feeling and testing your foe. So create some combos and give it a go. Hey everyone, Lauren back again. And today I want to talk about creating combat combos. Okay, maybe I just wanted some alliteration in the title. But we're going to talk about building up your fight style. Uh, when you fight you will inevitably find things that work best for your body mechanics and things that you like performing. And so if we're talking about you're into any kind of martial art, not just uh, European martial arts, not just sword-based and weapons-based stuff, but anything, you tend to come up with one, two, three, maybe four moves in a sequence. And you should have different sequences. If you rely on the same three to four moves in a row, you're going to be figured out pretty quick by an opponent and someone that might just have a little bit more defensive edge, a little bit more speed. They're going to figure it out and they're going to block, parry, beat every time and they're going to hit you back. So you should create several combinations. You should have a plan for how you fight. Incidentally, this is something that I ought to mention to some first time teens last night. There was a session that we did with uh, Sport Calgary here in Calgary, Alberta. And it was just a free chance for teens to come out and try a new sport. And of course, a martial arts are a big part of this. And we did some sword fighting. And we was talking about, okay, we're gonna make up some combinations because you don't just fight, I attack, and then I sit there and I wait for something to happen. You want to be progressive. You want to have these moves in mind. And if you get intercepted, well, as part of your combination, you'll practice to know what to do. So that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to start with a long sword. Maybe we'll move to a saber. Let's get the chair out of the way. Let's tape to the floor. Sword up in hand. So what I mean by a combination is I'm not just attacking. It's not just like a role-playing game or video game. I hit a button, I do an attack. And then I wait to see what happens. Oh, the person defended and they attack. Sure, there can be an exchange back and forth. And that's great for movies. But when you're fighting, you really want to have an idea that I'm going to go one thrust, two, set aside, five, and I'm doing different cuts. So you can reference the uh, cutting direction videos that I did a few months ago. Um, they'll be on the HEMA playlist of my channel. But what you're doing is you're putting together a combination and you should never just do the same combination over and over and over again. You should have an idea of what you're going to do. This will include a feint, so you're faking out your opponent. So I might open with a cut. Now, this, I'm right-handed, so my big, strong, right-handed cut. There I go. Yeah, that might be great. And that's usually a good opener, is to do something strong, fast, powerful, test your opponent because you want to see how they react to that first cut. If they deflect it, you're going to need a plan. So they parried and set the point aside. They're open for an attack. Are you then going to disengage and thrust as a second part of your combo? Are you ready for that? And you need to have these things in your head and you need to practice them. So we'll practice them and use them in your sparring. So we talked about getting into HEMA. Well, here are some things that you'll need to work on to be better if you intend to get into sparring and especially if you want to do competition, you want to go to a tournament, you need to have some ideas of how you're going to do your first couple of plays against your opponent so that you can start feeling out for their style, but still keep your style a little bit different so they can't quite figure you out. That's the hope anyway. But if we're all doing this, we're all going to have really good sweaty fights that really test us. So here I am, maybe I'm in my plow guard with the long sword. I decide I'm going to cut one, it's blocked, I come up around, I cut two, what am I going to do next? Okay, I can't freeze, I have to have three, four, maybe even five moves in a combination that I want to do. If I suddenly deliver second and it gets set aside again, and I freeze, the opponent comes in, I get hit. Probably a thrust, thrusts are really good, quick things, especially when someone is gonna pause that in their tempo. So I cut one, I cut two. I've now lost the sequence. 
I'm going to get hit. Well, that's not good. So we need to have these reactions. So we're building our neural pathways. We're building what we can do. So maybe I start, here I'm going to start a shoulder guard. So maybe I come in with a fake, but I'm already going to stop. I know that it's going to get parried. So I fake, come around for a two, follow up with a four. And again, we're using the cutting dire eight cutting directions that we talked about in some previous videos. We'll grab the saber in a second and just go over that and show how it applies to single-handed weapons as well as two-handed weapons, right? I might come in one, three. One, three, thrust, two. So now I'm building, I'm figuring out my directions and I'm putting together these little plans. I'm not going to go crazy because I don't want to hit the ceiling and cause a lot of uh, white popcorn stucco to fly all over the place. Definitely don't like that kind of ceiling, but it's what the house came with. Um, so when I'm fighting, I'm thinking about, I'm going to do this, and if this is blocked, what's my next move? And if that is blocked, what's my next move? What kind of things I'm going to do? And I'm also testing because there are certain things you shouldn't do in a sequence. Um, or at least they're really difficult. I should never say you shouldn't do anything because you never know what opportunity comes up. If I cut one, my strong overhead cut, there we go. There's my overhaul. I come in, I cut, and it gets blocked. I don't want to come all the way around for a cut four and do a weird awkward motion to try and get around that sword. Look how much distance. Remember, in the sword fight, you do want to have things timed to be quick, efficient. The shorter the distance, the faster the movement. Remember our theory of a straight line? That's the shortest distance between two points. If I'm here, that is a much faster move. So I cut one, two, that's going to work a lot better than one, four, which requires a lot more distance to cover and come up. So these are things that we want to think about when we build our combinations. And we really should have about five, six different sequences, maybe even upwards of ten sequences that you have in your mind. Because maybe you won't cut one, maybe you'll try a seven and add a bit of a distance. And from the seven, well, that's a lot of movement for a transition, so you want it blocked. So maybe if you're getting knocked to the side, then you'll try to follow up with a one, then it gets knocked down, you can try for three. three. So you could try a seven, one, three. Oh. And of course, throw thrusts in there, right? If I come in and I attack and the defender is weak on their bind and I manage to get control and my point is still online and their point is offline, so I should practice drills like that. So you could have one, two combos, kind of like boxing, you know, a one, two combo. It's the same thing for sword fighting. So I might want to hit, thrust. Oh, we're out of frame of the camera. I'll move back a bit. So I might want to hit, thrust. There we go. That might be a sequence of combination I practice. But a lot of fighters I go up against are probably going to be fairly strong in their binding. We're probably going to end up neutral. My thrust is going to be displaced. So I could go one, try a thrust. If it gets set aside, I should also then disengage the rest again. So I'm practicing these things. And that's how we build our fight style. We know what type of moves suit us, what we like, what we can deliver effectively and consistently. And that's how we put it together. Now, a quick thing on how that might apply to, let's say you're playing a video game or role playing game. Now in video games, you have combos. One, two, three, but they're usually all hits. It's not what it's going to be like in a real fight. You might one, two, three, they're all blocked. Finally, I get in my fourth attack. But if you're thinking about it sequentially and you're thinking about the time it takes for an exchange, let's say in a role-playing game, when you do your attack, that could be one, two, three different moves that are being defended, but one of them actually gets through. And you could fictionally position it that way. And we should have more movies where it's not just exchange, 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 but one, two, oh, now I'm back. I've got to defend, defend. Oh, now I'm attacking twice, three times. Oh, now it's changed the momentum backwards and forwards. 
So we're having these one, two, three. And when we teach uh, our new students and we show them stuff, we often do sequence. And it could be one, two, three, four, five movements in the sequence, just to show them how attacking isn't just, I'm in, and then I wait for something to happen. Because if you wait, if you pause, you're probably going to get hit. Now, just as a quick refresher then, what are you talking about? Oh, lift and eight different cuts. Well, as a quick refresher, we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and really good with the saber. A number eight, I tend not to do that kind of cut with a long sword, but you could. And of course, thrusts coming out, blocks, parries, beats. And so with the saber, the same thing can apply. So for a single-handed weapon, I could cut one, it gets blocked, come around, cut two, gets blocked, disengage, try and thrust, gets blocked, cut four, up. So I'm practicing these sequences. One, two, thrust, four, recover. And that's another thing about your fight style. When you're building these combinations, when you've solo practiced and you've done, let's say, four components in a drill, recover to a guard when you're done. If you're in a fight, one, two, three, you're not successful, didn't land anything, reset. Try a different combo. Now, I don't recommend starting with lower cuts, but if your opponent tends to fight high and you have a chance to drop in a low cut and give them a threat, could work, but you have to judge your opponent that way. That just takes practice and experience of sparring with people. If you only solo train, well, that's okay. You can develop these patterns. You can visualize what someone might do to stop them. And then you can build from there. And you could come up with a whole bunch of steps. You could probably come up with seven to eight steps in your combination if you really wanted. Reality, if you were sparring against someone, you might get three or four in before the momentum changes and they try something. They might get frustrated that you're so aggressive with your attacks. One, a two, a six, just trying to drop under, trying to thrust, a three, suddenly they really knock aside and they come at you. Practice defense combos as well. Imagine that your opponent is performing these combinations on you. They suddenly rush forward. You took that Tenth of a second too long, they started the attack sequence. Practice defending. So defend against your combos. Think about, okay, I'm going to stop a one, a two, a thrust. There was a cut four. I stop all of these attacks, and then I followed up with my own thrust. Think about that other people are going to have these combos as well. So that's how we build a fight style. That's how you see what you like to do, what's easy for your body to do. You practice your moves. Remember, you want your edge aligned. You want to draw your X with your cuts. You want your thrust to be in. You want to make sure that as you're cutting, you're not overcutting and exposing yourself. You want to cut and still be ready to defend. And that's how you build your sequences. So this will allow you to practice. If you have a mirror, practice in front of a mirror. That'll help you look at your edge alignment. That'll help you see that your arm is properly extended. And remember, don't grip the your sword and sabers. Don't, don't grip them too hard. A nice, gentle grip. Only tightening up when you need towards the lower part of your cut. And practice them. And practice them slowly. Build up speed. And then you can move faster with them as you go. So practice them slowly to be accurate and effective. Try to put four, even five moves into a combination. Make several different combinations. Think about if I opened a certain way, would I be exposed to a counterattack right away? Because one of the favorite things I like to do, someone is winding up or taking too long, just throw the sword right out there. Make them run right into it. A sneaky little thing. So there we go. So that's just today's little video, not so little video, talking about how you can build your fight style. Practice your combinations, techniques, 
think of four, five moves in the sequence, really bring it out. Also then plan to do defensive combos against an opponent. So if they're using the combination on you, imagine that the opponent is then attacking you with that combination and learn how to do a defensive combination as well so that if someone does really come on aggressive and is going to launch three, four attacks in a row really fast, one, two, three, I can really get in there and defend against them as well. So combination is not just aggression, it's defensive as well. Protect yourself because remember, rule number one is don't get hit. You want to hit the opponent without being hit yourself. Not always so easy, but especially if you're going to build up to fighting competitively, you want to go to tournaments, you need to have in your head some pre-programmed combinations that you're going to want to unleash and go one, two, three, four, trying to wear out the opponent and create that opening so that you can land a cut or a thrust at the right time and score the point and not be hit yourself. All right, friends, thank you very much for watching. Do remember, like, subscribe, and of course, comment. If you have things you would like to see on the channel, comment. Let's talk about, let's chat about different things. We can chat about techniques. We can chat about building combinations or what you'd like to see in the future because your ideas help shape the content on the channel. And of course, the likes and subscribes help the algorithm and I do always appreciate those. So friends, do take care, stay safe. Keep on swinging and practice your combinations when you can.